Sergeants of the Three Rivers on Art Rooney Drive, we welcome you to Heinz Field in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. This was the scene just a few moments ago as the Pittsburgh faithful were fired up by the hometown Steelers taking the field. They're all set as they'll match up with the Carolina Panthers. First carry for James Conner, and he will lose yardage here back at the 23-yard line. It's a loss of two there, bringing up second down. I know when I was a kid, I always got real excited when I saw those lateral-type runs, but the best backs that made it happen, they put a foot in the ground and just go. That didn't happen there. That play got swallowed up. So the opening play of the drive goes backwards. Now they'll come up on second and 12. On second down, Roethlisberger, and that is incomplete here. Antonio Brown, the intended receiver, and it's third down. Let's face it, you can run the route tree as many times as you want, get in sync, practice it, do all those things, but once you get to game speed, it doesn't always time up quite that well. That one goes incomplete. Three and out, a real danger here on their opening drive as they come up on a third and 12. Here's Roethlisberger. Got his man complete over the middle. It's Connor. And they get him down, but not before he takes it across the line. A gain of 19 in picking up the first. Roethlisberger will hand to Connor, and he'll be brought down, losing yardage back at the 40. It's a loss of a yard there, and now second down. I know the scouting report on him is that he doesn't possess the eye discipline to be an elite linebacker, and what that means is his ability to read, react, and make a play. But on that one, he looked like one of those guys. They run with Connor. He'll take this from the 40 up to the 45 for a gain of five. The Steelers, of course, had all the questions lingering with Le'Veon Bell. Tip of the cap to James Conner. He really has filled in nicely. He prepared himself as if he were going to be the starter right from week one. And I got to see him in preseason, and you saw a little bit of everything. His ability to run inside, also run to the perimeter, catch the ball out of the backfield. And how about his season opener against Cleveland? They didn't win the game. But he played awfully well, 135 yards rushing, and he helped close out a big win at Tampa Bay in week three on Monday Night Football with some nice runs down the stretch. Now throwing on third down there, but he cannot connect. Not only was the call spot on, how about the execution of that defense right there? Zone was absolutely locked up tight. He was trying to force it in there on third down. But if there's a time to force it, he felt like he needed to make a play, right? Yeah, exactly right. Third down, you got to try and find something. There's nothing available there for him. Look at the Carolina Panthers coming back onto the field. This is a unit, Charles, that feels very comfortable in uptown Charlotte. They got their ninth straight win at home last week when they took care of Baltimore 36-21. to And Cam Newton did his thing, and the Panthers now 5-2. Yeah, and they took down the number one defense in the NFL in terms of yards per game allowed in the Baltimore Ravens. And Cam Newton quietly... I think is having his best season since his MVP year of 2015. Now six straight games with at least two touchdown passes, and you always have to defend him in the run game as well. This Carolina offense is starting to perk on all cylinders. They tried a quick hitter inside, but that one was swallowed up because what they're hoping, those big defensive linemen will take the bait and move laterally and open up a crease that they can run through. Didn't happen on that play. On second down, here's Newton. And incomplete there. A nice hit. Jars the ball free and brings up third down. He went with a dime look on defense. Two extra defensive backs on the field and covered up essentially every blade of grass. That allowed them to disrupt the play. They head to the line facing a third and seven following the incompletion on second down. From the gun, here's Newton. And that is incomplete. 
And third down is a key down in any game you play. And third down defense, something we got to watch in this one. Got to be effective on the passing downs. That's a pretty good first step right there. So on fourth down, kicking it away here, Michael Pilardi. And he gets this away. And look at this. This is a good one. And this one hits at the one, continues on into the end zone for a touchback. Pittsburgh's offense taking the field again, and it's a three-game win streak right now for the Steelers. So after the rough start, Charles, they're 4-2-1. And, and Ben Roethlisberger passed Fran Tarkenton for eighth on the all-time passing list in touchdowns. 343, and when you're passing Fran Tarkenton, you know you're having a heck of a career. He found Antonio Brown twice, so their connection back and established. And how about running back James Conner? Le'Veon Bell still not on the team, but James Conner, 146 yards on the ground, two touchdowns. He's playing at an elite level. And out across midfield, down to the 45. And that one results in 35 yards. And there's our first glimpse of Antonio Brown in this game, and he's a guy that's a threat each and every time the ball heads in his direction. Coming off the second year, where he led the league in receiving yards in 2017. Yeah, 1,533, just turned 30 back in July, and no signs of this man stopping. He didn't seem in a rush. I guess they just didn't know where the play clock was. I think you're right about that because there was no hurried movements there, right? No up-tempo at all. Clock just ran out. I think he was as surprised as maybe his bench was. The delay of game backs him up five, first and 15. From midfield now, here's Roethlisberger. His throw incomplete. James Bradbury, he was right there to break it up. Nice play there to force the incompletion. And to me, one thing's for sure. When you're the underdogs and you're playing on the road, you absolutely have to get takeaways. You've got to get the ball from them. Yeah, win that turnover battle, going to be key. They didn't get one there, but you get the feeling they keep making plays like that. They might just get a few. Yeah, once you get one, defensive teams think they come in bunches. On second down, here's Roethlisberger. That'll be taken in there by James Washington. And he'll get it down here to the 43. The reception good for seven. It's third down. In need of a conversion on third down. They had the big play to start the drive. Not much sense. Ben to throw again. And this is going to be incomplete. The all-pro linebacker, Luke Keekley right there on the coverage, stride for stride. It's a great job by this secondary. When I watch them, they remind me of elite defenders on a basketball court, right? They want to contest each and every pass. Great contest on third down to bring up fourth. Here's Jordan Berry now as he'll kick it away for the second time. And the Panthers coming out now. The crowd may be losing just a little bit of the edge after back-to-back -back punts. They want some big plays. They want to see some offense. They want to see somebody break away, whether it's through the air or on the ground. Now it'll be interesting to see where the patience is on both sides. Each head coach, can you hang in there and not try and force something that could put your team in some jeopardy? First carry of the game for Christian McCaffrey. And a short pick up there as he'll take this up to right around the 20. Stephon Tewitt, the one that got him down. Well, we saw him there trying to get it to the outside, trying to get to the perimeter, but not a whole lot of room there. But there's got to be one positive to that. If you keep moving laterally, creases tend to develop as the game moves on, and they can run it back inside later. Back to the ground. This time it's Anderson. And he'll get this up over the 25 to the 26. Give him six yards on the carry. It's going to be third and three now. A quick burst there, and he nicely bit off a pretty decent game. They'll run it. Here's Anderson. 
Only a yard on the pickup there, and it's going to leave him with a fourth down. We haven't seen much from him running the football here in this first quarter. No, you're right about that. We haven't seen much of him at all so far. They've stacked him up pretty well, but when you're trying to run the football, sometimes you've got to play the long game. Keep handing it to him, and some of those runs that aren't working now, they turn into six, seven, eight, and maybe more later on. And this is away. It's a high kick, and he got all of it. Well, we looked at each other right away. We knew that flag was coming out. And I always enjoy the conversation post because officials always tell you, I don't want to throw the flag, but you caused the play. You did it. I had to. Running into the punter keeps this drive alive as they operate now with a first and ten. Newton going to hand it off to McCaffrey. And he'll be taken down right around the 34 after a pickup of only a yard. Looks like they're establishing a pretty good pattern here because they've been very heavy in the running game on the last four plays. Yeah, you took the words right out of my mouth. So far, four plays in this drive, all four on the ground. On second down, Anderson. And he'll get two, maybe three, up near the 37. Well, so many times we look at a short run and we praise the offense for trying to set the tempo and establish things, but the defensive guys, hey, they just won the battle there. It wasn't a big run given up. They don't always have to absorb the body blow. Sometimes they dish them out themselves. Throwing on third down, Newton. And that is incomplete. And what did we talk with them about prior to the game? Their ability to move the chains, pick up first downs. So far, 0 for 3 on third down. If that continues, they'll have little chance of winning this one. Here's Michael Pilardi now, as he'll punt it away for the second time. He steps into this one, and this is a rocket. And that is much too long. That's into the end zone for a touchback. And Pittsburgh getting set to take the field. They've had it twice. They punted twice. Not the start they were hoping for. Not at all. And let's face it, every facility we visit, everyone talks about converting on third down, how big that is. In this situation, they've had to punt it away twice. So they're furiously going over things on the sidelines. What do we need to do to pick up a first down and change our momentum? Now Roethlisberger on first down. On the left side, it's McDonald. No gain there on the completion, second and 10. Well, that was a simple throw and catch, but even with that completion, zero yards gained, so they're behind schedule on down and distance. I think they were hoping to get it to him. He could make a man or two miss, but that window closed quickly. Had the completed pass, but for no gain, stopped right at the line, so it's second and 10. He didn't even try to signal for a timeout, so they must have not been aware of the numbers. I think he lost track of the time left in the play clock and probably was trying to read the defense and trying to figure out which play to run and just lost track, and it cost him. And now after the delay of game, they're operating behind the stick, second and 15. From the shotgun, it's Roethlisberger. And McDonald here over the middle. And they'll bring him down here up at about the 22-yard line. The reception good for seven. It's third down. Let's not quibble about the gain there on second down. That was a positive play because that was a take-what-you-can-guess situation. Got out to the tight end. Now it gives him a much better opportunity to convert on third down. And the Steelers on third down. Just one for three thus far. This is third and eight. Out of the gun. It's Roethlisberger. The Panthers too strong they get there and take him down Julius Peppers coming in to drop him for a loss of eight and it'll be fourth down great job defensively I think he was trying to go through his progressions find someone to get rid of the football before he knew it he was on his back so that just brings us right back to what you said in the beginning a great job defensively nowhere to go with the football that led to the sack 
That's a 48-yard punt with a coverage holding him to three on the return. And the Panthers will take over now first and 10. Carolina getting set to take the field. And our game's hit a little bit of a lull here, a little bit of a snag. Punts on back-to-back -back drives. And old-school coaches don't necessarily mind that. Didn't turn it over, right? Didn't create a big play for the other team. Right now, what you're looking for is can you gain an advantage in field position? And that's what both teams are seeking right now. Yeah, they'll be seeking to gain that advantage here on this drive. It's a pickup of four, and it'll bring up second down. I call that play a success. A nice inside run sets up a very manageable second down, a very solid gain on that play. Second down, McCaffrey. And he is going to be stopped cold behind the line of scrimmage. It's a loss of two, now third down. Anytime you call an inside running play, you just know there should be a lot of congestion there. You're counting on your offensive line to take control of the line of scrimmage. That didn't happen in this case, and that play got bottled up. The Panthers on third down, 0 for 3 to this point. They could use a conversion. This is third and eight. The shotgun snap for Newton. And they get to Newton and take him down for the sack. These strong safeties, some people may not realize it. It's really like an extra linebacker, right? It really is because they're hybrids. Half linebacker, half defensive back. The linebacker in him on that play emerged. Here's Michael Pilardi now. As the drive goes backwards, so he's on to punt it away. And that hits at the six and carries into the end zone for a touchback. The Steelers' offense now, they head back onto the field. So far, they've had three drives, three punts. Not good. Not good indeed because you've got to have something to show for being out on the field. Now, sometimes if you have a game where neither side has scored, three punts isn't a bad thing. But when you're trying to set the pace, get up on top in a game, you've got to show better offense and find a way to put some points on the board. It's Connor as they stay on the ground. And he'll get this up to the 30-yard line. It'll be a gain of 10 to start the drive out, and by a few inches, that'll be a first down. Well, one unit I know you want to watch is that offensive line. If they keep clearing holes like that, it could be a long night defensively. No doubt about it, because when they are in sync, as we're seeing so far, when that continuity is there, and you can see that they're playing off of each other while controlling the defensive front linebackers, you're exactly right. It could be a very long night for the defense because someone's going to run for some big yardage. And he'll be tackled just past the 35 at the 36. In on the tackle there, Luke Keekley. One thing to keep in mind, partner, especially in the second half, when you've got a running back of this size, of these dimensions, I can just tell you, attrition does set in for a defense because you're excited about hitting him in the first half. Maybe not so much in the second half, and some of these shorter gains turn into bigger runs later. They snap it at one. Now it's Roethlisberger. Over the middle here to Brown. And he'll get up to the 43-yard line. Back with Charles Davis, Brandon Gordon. It's Steeler football to begin quarter number two. And they've got it here with a first down. Roethlisberger. And his throw here's incomplete. James Bradbury, he was right there to break it up. Let's see if you allow me to switch topics here for a second. By, by all means. Thank you, ahead. thank you. The, the Saints have won six in a row, and they've been a team that we've talked about a lot in recent weeks. This coming week, though, they play the undefeated Rams. That is going to be a blockbuster matchup. Man, they get them at home. They get them in the dome. So that's going to be a whole lot of fun to watch. They are a true contender to the Rams right now, okay? Let's face it, the Rams are undefeated, taking on everyone, high-flying offense, defense with a guy named Aaron Donald that can wreck you from inside. But the Saints are contenders because their run defense is pretty darn stout. Cam Jordan, their defensive end, never gets enough attention or recognition. And now they're unleashing the rookie, Marcus Davenport, off the edge at quarterbacks. He's playing better and better every week. I think this is going to be a whole lot of fun. Drew Brees taking on the young quarterback, Jared Goff. I think we've got a blast on our hands. And how about the running back battle? Alvin Kamara, Mark Ingram from New Orleans, Todd Gurley for the Rams. Buckle up. Now a third down throw, but it misses the target incomplete. 
Here's Jordan Berry now, as he's on to punt for the fourth time tonight. And that'll hit in the end zone. Much too much leg there. That'll be a touchback. Carolina getting set to take the field. The results for them so far, not that great. Well, not good at all. Three drives, three punts. Yeah, and now what you're doing is you're looking at your play sheet. You're trying to figure out what you're going against defensively. I wonder, are they showing them something they haven't seen or anticipated in practice, and maybe that's throwing them off? Or do they just have to go to a different play calling section and try and run some offense that way? They start the drive with Anderson. And forget about finding a lane. He barely had time to look up before he was planted in the backfield. Yeah, and that was a safety that came through and made the play. But there's no doubt in my mind, he hits like a linebacker. And we see a lot of that in today's NFL, don't we? And that time, we do indeed a big hit for a loss. First play of the drive goes the wrong way. Here's second and 12. There's Newton now on second down. And this is going to be incomplete. But not to get too overcritical there because he knows what he's doing, but his shoulders looked a little off kilter there when he threw that. I don't think you're being overly critical there. You're just analyzing it, and he gets those shoulders right. That pass will go from incomplete to complete. The Panthers on third down. Not good. 0 for 4 thus far. This is third down and 12. Out of the gun, Newton. And it's going to be incomplete. He was able to catch it there on the right sideline, but out of bounds, says the line judge. And it's going to bring up fourth down. But no second guessing the call here. It was third and long, so throwing the football was probably the smart play to try and pick it up. But they don't get it, and now the defense goes off the field feeling pretty good about themselves, gaining some momentum as they force them into a likely punting situation. He gets this one away, and boy, it's another boomer. And take it right on the 30. A nice job on the return there. 16 yards. And the Steelers will go on offense here. First and 10. The Steelers offense now. They get ready to head back on the field. Now, if you're a fan of punting, and I know that not many people are, but this game kind of turning into one for you. Well, it's okay if it's a skills contest, right? We're really into it then, but not during the course of an actual game. This has turned into a field position game, though. Sometimes a better punter may actually determine the outcome. And now whistles and a flag, and I think we got a jump here. A free five yards as the defense jumps. I know it's an anticipation game for them, but it's also a reaction game, and they reacted poorly on that one. A boost here to start the drive. After the penalty, it's first and five. Here's Connor. And five yards on the play there as the drive will continue. Now that's the way to do it. Hand it to someone with vision and good footwork and add in a little bit of power, and you find a way to pick up first downs. game working they'll stick with it on first down two yards on the carry there it'll be second down well he was looking for some running room and there wasn't a whole lot of it there on that play I think he was lucky to get a couple yards out of it because those defenders they were rallying to the football pretty quickly Berger to throw on second down. And that's off the mark, incomplete. Well, he did almost everything right. Excellent coverage, breaks on the football, just unable to haul it in and take it the other way. So he dropped an interception. The key for him now, don't dwell on it, just move on to the next play. The Steelers on third down, just one for five to this point. This is third and eight. From the gun, it's Roethlisberger. And he couldn't hang on to it through the contact. Incomplete. Seems like this defense, especially the secondary, has really been contesting about every throw in this first half. Remind me of a good half-court defensive basketball team. Every time a pass is thrown, they're right there in good, good defensive position, able to affect the play.
And this is off target to the left. Didn't get there anyway. It's no good. And this will remain a scoreless game. Well, this winds up an empty possession. Everything looked okay. He just never got the ball on target. And knowing him, he'll be disappointed with that effort. So they tried the 59-yarder and missed it. And now this offense starts just one yard shy of midfield. Newton on first down. It's hauled in by Torrey Smith. And he'll be taken down at the 44-yard line. Seven yards, the pickup on the pitch and catch. And that's one of his advantages of a passer, is it not? With his height, setting back there in the pocket, firing it over the middle, he can really see everything clearly. It is, and I know that other quarterbacks get it done different ways, all right? You don't have to be his height to make a great play, but what he does is he takes away having to make those slide steps in the pocket to find angles to throw the ball through. He just throws right over the top of it because he can see everything, and sometimes that saves time and gets the ball to a receiver quicker. Throwing again on second down, but this time it's incomplete. It's a lot of contact going on there, and in the end, unable to keep two hands on the football and bring it into his body. Everything looked pretty good until the finish. The Panthers on third down, a pretty woeful 0 for 5 thus far. This time it's third and three. Operating from the gun, Newton, and he finds a man, it's Olsen. And he gets this inside the 35-yard line. Newton to Olsen there for a Carolina first down. Well, sometimes our pregame meetings do pay off, don't they? What did the guys in the locker room call him? Well, they said it with a chuckle. They called him old reliable. Yeah, that means he doesn't move quite as fast as he used to, but he still knows all the tricks, doesn't he? Even that little gentle push-off in order to get open. He finds a way to pick up a first down. On first down, this is McCaffrey. And he'll get this down to about the 30, 31 yard line. Give him three on first down. It'll set up a second and seven. When we see those runs to the perimeter, when we see those runs to the edge, we think about big breakers, don't we? In this case, it was a modest gain, but it does open up possibilities here on second down. To throw on second down is Newton. He's got Smith here. And he'll go down here right around the 23-yard line. Eight yards on the pick up there, and it moves the sticks. This offense finding its legs now. Here's another first and 10. On first down, Newton. And Olsen over the middle. And down inside the 15, shy of the 10. A nice pick up there, 10 yards, and it'll move the sticks. <laughs> I got a kick out of that one, partner. You and I talk often about trying to hide receivers in certain situations, but a guy of his size can't really hide him. But the tight end drag route, definitely an effective way to sneak him across the formation for an easy completion and a first down. On first and 10, Newton trying to lob it in there, but it's incomplete. Those passes out that far wide always make you hold your breath a little bit. Felt like it was in the air for a while. What it does is allows a defender to gain some ground, come from a long distance, and have a chance to affect the pass. So after the incompletion on first, now second and 10. This is Newton off the play fake to McCaffrey. And they will not get the connection there. It's incomplete. Greg Olson was the intended target. Third down here. Sometimes the coverage is so good, no matter what you're doing on offense, you just can't shake anyone free. They try their best to find someone open, but they took away every passing alley, every angle, and shut the play down. The Panthers on third down. They've had their troubles, just one for six. This is third and 10. Again, Newton. And he can't quite get there. Tackled down at the one. They're able to convert on third down, and that sets up a first and goal.
Throwing is Newton. And he's going to go down just outside of the five, right around the six-yard line. T.J. Watt coming in hard on the blitz. He gets him down for a loss of four. Well, surprise, surprise. First and goal at the one. No quarterback sneak. No running play. They decide to throw for it, but the pressure got to him quickly and put the quarterback down. Back at the five-yard line now. Second and goal. On second and goal, there's an option play left. They'll get two on the keeper, but it becomes now a third down. Well, they had that one sniffed out. Excellent run blitz. Stopped that one for a short game. What makes a good run blitz a good run blitz? The ability to stay on task, to follow up your assignment, go to the gap you're supposed to cover, and not be deterred by anything else. The Steeler defense proving its mettle here. And now this is third and goal. Newton now to throw. And he will take it across for a Panthers touchdown. Devin Funches from three yards out. And his guys are able to strike for six. Graham Gano on for the extra point. Extra point try good by Gano. And it's now a 7 0 game. Gano out to kick this one away. Here comes Ryan Switzer to return it. And a good effort on the return there. Gets him across the 30 to the 33-yard line. And Pittsburgh getting set to take the field. Last time out, they had that long 50-plus-yard field goal that they missed. And I'm sure on their sideline, they're thinking to themselves, okay, do we still want to try one if we're in that position again? And I would dare say that the answer would be yes. They're going to have a lot of confidence in their kicker. But just to be on the safe side, I'm sure they told their offensive guys, can we get a little bit closer yeah, this time? Closer. Yeah, well, you know, I'd rather get in the end zone first and foremost. But if all else fails, less of a field goal attempt for him. And able to get this one across the 45 before he's brought down. Solid way to start the drive. 13 yards, picking up the first. Roethlisberger now just 7 of 15 so far, but he's got a first and 10. Set. Blue 30. To throw here, Roethlisberger. To the right side and complete to Washington. And taking it across midfield and inside the 45. The Steeler first down on the pickup of 11 yards. Back-to-back -back good plays have them on the move on first down. They'll run it now out of the gun. And he'll take this one down to about the 40. A gain of three, second down. When we talk about Luke Keekley, you can't talk about his overall game without talking about his intelligence and how he controls the whole defense. He quarterbacks that defense and at times will actually make checks just like a quarterback would on offense to get them into the right defense. They definitely were on that play. How about that finish? Holding that to a minimal game. They'll run it now out of the gun. Absolutely nobody fooled there. He's going nowhere fast as he stopped behind the line of scrimmage. The Steelers on third down. They've had their troubles. Just one for six. This is third and 11. Set. Black 80. Roethlisberger will throw. Right. 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 
open. Man Smith Schuster, it's complete. And he's going to get this one down to the edge of the red zone. And they're able to convert on third with a solid gain of 23. You know, when I see passes like that, I'm reminded of something you and I talked about yesterday. Big Ben was a wide receiver the first three years of high school, sitting behind the coach's son, and then he finally got that opportunity. I think he's made the most of it. It's always the coach's son, isn't it? But you know where it helps him? When he looks downfield, he knows what the receivers are going to do. He actually has wide receiver's eyes when he's throwing the ball. And they've got it inside the 10 at the 8. Another nice gain, 13 yards that time, and another first down. They ran that one well, and not only did they pick up a nice chunk of yardage on the screen, they sent a message to the defense. Rush the passer all you want, but you better be careful. We can hit you going back the other direction. A first opportunity for the Steelers in the red zone. This is first and goal from about the eight. Here's Roethlisberger. This is caught, and he's able to get it down to the two-yard line. That'll bring up second and goal after the gain of five. He decided to run a hitch route. It really helped to have a guy who can turn it loose, and boy, he rifled one in there on that one. Not much run after catch, but it worked really well. From the two now, second and goal. They'll give it to Ridley. And he gets halfway there down to the one-yard line. Call it a gain of a yard as they get a little bit closer here. It's third and goal. So now things get interesting on third and goal from the one. This almost becomes a Darwinian call, doesn't it? Almost survival of the fittest here. I know we can go all cliche. I'll go ahead and do it. Who wants it more here? Who has a better leverage at the line of scrimmage? Let's go and see what happens. They'll run at Steven Ridley. And now we get a timeout called on the defensive side of the ball by the Panthers. As they'll stop it with a tick under a minute to go before half. And for the second time tonight, this field goal unit comes out here. This will be just a 21-yard attempt. And Boswell's kick is good. And they are on the board, but still trailing. It's 7-3. So they do get the three points before they hit halftime. Something to build on, maybe. Yeah, go ahead and raise the banner, right? But wave the flag. That's good. Got points. And now, as you said, they've got something to build on as they get ready for the second half. After the successful field goal try, here's Boswell to send it away. This is fielded at the goal line. And he'll take this one near the 25, call it the 26-yard line. Here's the Carolina offense as they get ready to take over here. And we'll see how this is played. Offensively, they've got the lead. Not a whole lot of time left. What do you think, Charles? Well, it's tempting to try and add to your lead, but a mistake there, that could change things in a big way. I say go ahead, take the knee, get on out for the half. Now Newton on first down. Catch here, left side, Thomas. Now hold everything here. We're going to get a timeout by the offense as they get the stoppage with just under 50 seconds remaining in half number one. Now the Panthers offense, they get set to come back onto the field. And we'll see how this is played. Offensively, they've got the lead. Not a whole lot of time left. What do you think, Charles? Well, it's tempting to try and add to your lead, but a mistake there, that could change things in a big way. I say go ahead, take the knee, get on out for the half. Four yards on that last completion, so that sets up second and six. Right here, right here. 
from the gun. Here's Newton. Over the middle to Smith. And he'll be brought down shy of the 40 at the 38-yard line. It goes as a gain of eight, and it moves the chains. Well, if you do read man coverage, Brandon, the drag route's a pretty good one to run against it because you're running away from people on it. Newton now just 7 of 15 so far, but he's got a first and 10. A shotgun snap for Newton. On the catch, it's Jarius Wright. And he'll be stopped right at midfield. And now we won't see a play on first down. We're going to get a timeout instead as it'll come with 15 seconds to play in the first half. From the 50, Newton. side by Funches. And now they are knocking on the door inside Pittsburgh's 10. A big play there just before halftime. 42 yards. We have hit halftime. Still two more quarters to go. We'll take a timeout. We'll be back after this. You're watching the NFL and it's on EA Sports. It's in the game. Fielded about a yard deep. And all that work, but he stopped where he ultimately would have been, and he's simply taken a knee, and that's the 25-yard line. Out come the Panthers. They'll have it first on offense in the third quarter. They have the lead. Now they'll be looking for some separation here as we begin the third quarter. I like the way you term that because now I think they go a little bit deeper into their playbook. They like what they did in the first half. That worked okay. But in order to get the separation that you just talked about, change things up a little bit. Change your tendencies, try and hit them a little bit more with some things they didn't see in the first half. Let's we'll see if they do just that. It's a six-yard pickup, and it gets them to second and four. Let's talk a little football 101 here because one of the keys to advancing the ball downfield, success on first down. Huge difference, as we know, between second and four and second and eight and nine. They'll come up now second and four from the 31. Another run, this time McCaffrey. And he'll get it out near the 40 to the 39. It's a seven-yard gain there, and it's good enough to move the chains. They're trying to show that they can run the ball, protect this lead, give it to the backs, play a little bit of keep away, don't you think? And that's probably a good philosophy at this point, going to make that defense stand up and stop them. So from the 39 now, they'll come up on a first and 10. Back to the ground on first, it's McCaffrey. And he'll be brought down just shy of midfield at the 49-yard line. It'll be a pickup of 10 yards. And that'll bring up a second in just about a few inches here. Running lanes were at a premium in the first half, but he's able to find some room there, and he's hoping that that's a precursor of a big second half. They fake the give. Newton staying on his feet. And he is out of bounds, but not before he's inside the 30. A good pick up there, 26 yards. We often, with Cam Newton, talk a lot about his legs. Don't forget about that arm. He can throw it on a rope. He can loft it. He's got the touch that's been developed throughout his career. But the big part about just watching him throw it, it seems almost effortless. Operating out of Steeler territory now. Here's first and 10 at the 25-yard line. This is McCaffrey on the give. And he's going to fight his way forward here for a modest game. He'll get a nice chunk there on the first down run, and it's second and four. That play wasn't quite as big as the play that preceded it, but still, got to like the way they're moving the football, partner. Absolutely. Pretty good room to run on that last play. Yeah, they didn't get a first down, but still, you'll take runs like that each and every time, won't you? On second down, here's Newton. Floating one incomplete. We've seen good cover skills on display throughout this game, really from both teams. And there's another nice example there of them making it difficult to complete a pass. 
The Panthers on third down. They've converted three times in eight chances. This is third and four. Out of the gun, Newton. And this is going to be incomplete. I think that was a good job there defensively. They did allow him to drive all the way downfield, but once they got their backs to the goal line, they really turned up the pressure. Yeah, they let him get all the way down here. Now the field shrinks. They've struggled to convert, and that last incompletion brings up fourth. Fourth down, and here's Graham Gano now in the field goal unit for the Panthers. From the left hash, this from 37. And Gano's kick is right through. And they push the lead up to a touchdown now at 10 to 3. So chalk that down as an eight play drive capped with a field goal. Yeah, as a friend of mine used to say, they were moving and grooving for a while, but they couldn't keep the momentum going enough to get a touchdown out of it. After knocking through the field goal, here's Gano back out there now for the kickoff. Switzer now to return. And a good effort on the return there. Gets him across the 30 to the 33-yard line. Time for the Steelers' offense now to get set for their first possession of half number two. They trail offense, first time to touch the ball in quarter three, and we'll see what they can do. And I can't wait to see what they have planned because some teams script to start a half. Other teams just go, okay, these are the sequence of plays we want to run. These things worked well for us. And sometimes they throw in that big chunk play right away. Shocker. Try and get after them early and try and create a big play to give themselves some momentum. See what they have up their sleeve. That's going to go as a loss of a yard, and it'll be second down. The best offenses and the ones that win are ones that make adjustments. And right now, I think this team needs to open things up. After the loss to start out, here's second and 11. Hey, set! Black 30! On second down, Roethlisberger. And incomplete on the deep ball. Vance McDonald, the tight end, was the target. And that takes us from second to third down. A pretty good coverage there in both of these defenses. They've had good coverage throughout this one. No doubt about it. And in today's NFL, where we're used to a bit more scoring, this feels almost like a well-pitched game in baseball on both sides where the tension continues to build. Who's going to make the big play? Now Roethlisberger. And this one is incomplete. And we're into the second half now, and this is an offense that continues to struggle to sustain a drive. Looks like they're just totally out of sync, whether they're running the ball, passing the ball like we saw there. I don't know. The rhythm seems off. Here's Jordan Berry now, as he'll come on for his fifth kick of the night. And he deserves a bronze leg as he gets this one away. And this one hits at the three and then bounds into the end zone for a touchback. Carolina getting set to take the field. And they're not going to play this conservative, I don't think. They had a field goal last time, and they're up, but they're looking to put a drive in the end zone. Oh, I agree with you totally. No one is, goes out on the field and says, all right, let's just settle for three, except in certain situations, trying to ice a game, that sort of deal. Most of the time, it's end zone, and that's what you're thinking, and I believe that's exactly what they're thinking as they begin this one. Yeah, no quarterback ever goes out there saying, let's get three, right? <laughs> Not one that I've ever met. And he'll find some space up to about the 25. Five yards is the tally on first down. That brings up second and five. Despite the blitz, they're still able to pick up a nice, solid game. The disadvantage of blitzing often alters the normal spacing and run fits and leaves creases like they were able to exploit right there. Here's a second and five now from the 25. That's going to set him back five yards. So the delay of game penalty moves it back five. That makes it second and ten. Get set. 
There's Newton. They'll set up the screen to McCaffrey. 17 yards on the pickup there, and the drive will continue. It was funny, during the draft process, someone said to me, well, whoever takes Christian McCaffrey, as it turned out, it was Carolina. How are they going to use him? Is he going to be an every down back? Is he going to be a third down guy? Are they going to use him in the slot? What are they going to do with him? And I just said, yes. <laughs> all of that. No doubt about yeah. it. This kid can do it all. And he did a nice job there out of the backfield to pick up the first. They'll give it up to McCaffrey. And he'll get this up to about the 38-yard line. It's big Vince Williams who made the tackle. They tried a quick hitter inside, but that one was swallowed up because what they're hoping, this big defensive lineman will take the bait and move laterally and open up a crease that they can run through. Didn't happen on that play. There's Newton now on second down. He finds his man, the tight end Olsen. And able to break one tackle, but then quickly brought down. But a nice little game. Eight yards on the completion, but now they face third down. One thing you're hoping for when you run drag routes, you're able to hit a receiver in stride, and he can pick up a lot of yardage after the catch. But in this situation, the defense was effective, able to stop him before he could get a good head of steam going. So that'll back him up five. Not ideal there. That delay of game backs him up five yards. So now they need seven yards on third down. From the gun, Newton, and he finds a man, it's Olsen. And he'll be taken down, but not before he gets into enemy territory. 12 yards there as they keep this drive rolling. It's another first down. And defensively, they were in zone coverage there. Do you have to be a little careful you're losing playing against a good quarterback like he is to not play too much zone? Yeah, you have to be careful about how much time you're giving up. I think it's a good point you just brought up. So maybe if you still want to play zone, you go to a zone blitz scheme, and you can drop anyone out of your defensive front, defensive end, defensive tackle. It doesn't matter. You just exchange someone to bring more pressure towards the quarterback and still try and cover downfield. A very solid gain of 27. Smiles, everyone, smiles, because when Cam Newton and Greg Olson hook up like they've been doing throughout this game, that's one big reason why they're winning. What makes Greg Olson so tough to cover? I think he really is a wide receiver in the tight end's body. He runs his routes with such great precision and some physical toughness, and he really fights and competes for the ball. And then, of course, it helps to have Cam Newton throwing it to you. Rolling to his right. And down inside the 15, shy of the 10. 10 more there and another first down. Oh, my Cam. There's times when I'm not analyzing up here. I'm just appreciating. Led NFL quarterbacks in rushing last year. He is truly the ultimate weapon at that position. Set him back five. Now they need 15 yards on this series after the delay of game. First and 15. McCaffrey following the penalty. And they go the wrong way here. Knocked back to the 20. Now whistles here, and it looks like we've got a Panther that's having some difficulty down there getting up. While the trainers take a look, we'll step aside. Watch one, watch one. 
To throw on second down is Newton. And he's going to drop this off to his fullback. Five yards on the pickup. And they're going to be staring at a third and long here. Now that's often a surprise for the defensive guys when they see the big fella slide out of the backfield and catch the ball. Not something they usually go over in practice very often. The Panthers on third down. They're right at about the league average, 40%, 4 for 10. This will be third and 15. Now Newton. Now they go screen. It's complete. Able to fight through one tackle. And he's able to work it here to the eight-yard line. Eight yards on the screen there, not enough. And it'll be fourth down. Instead of throwing it downfield, Charles, they just tried to dump it underneath there. Do you like the call? I do. I think it's a high percentage play because you get the completion. And what you're counting on is your back to use his legs and his elusiveness to make people miss and pick up the first down. In this case, it didn't happen. And Gano's kick is right through. And they will stretch their lead to 10 now at 13-3. So the field goal there caps what winds up to be an 11-play drive. Well, partner, that's a lot of offense to run there to only get three points. So I just wonder, are they going to recycle those plays because they were successful in getting three? Or do you go to another section of the playbook trying to find ones that get you into the end zone and get you six? After knocking through the field goal, here's Gano back out there now for the kickoff. Switzer now to return. And he'll take this across the 25. A couple of extra yards up to the 27-yard line. And Pittsburgh getting set to take the field. These guys had to punt their last possession, and that's become too familiar of a refrain. Too many of these drives just wound up going nowhere. Well, you know how in baseball, when the pitcher gets a base hit and he's on base, they bring his jacket out to him to keep him warm? A lot of times, the punter goes to the sideline, puts on sweatpants or a wrap over his leg to keep it warm. He might need a massage from the trainer right now <laughs> from all the work he's getting. Now Roethlisberger. It's complete to Brown, right side. And they work this well upfield across the 45. And a nice gain of 21 yards. A good grab there by the former Central Michigan man, Antonio Brown. And he ate up some real estate on the catch, too, didn't he? I think the most impressive part of it, though, if there's a chance for him to get the football, even though he was covered well, he somehow finds a way to get it. They'll run with Redley. And he'll get across midfield and into Carolina territory. Three yards on the pickup there, and it'll be second down. Vision is so important for the man in the middle because his ability to, to, to look through all the clutter that's happening in front of him, diagnose a play, and then go make it and finish it, that's when the great ones know that they have the goods. They'll run it now, out of the gun. And that didn't fool anybody. He's going to be dropped in the backfield. And they'll lose a yard that time, and that's going to lead to a third down. Brandon, we're into the second half, and this offense has not scored a lot of points. And that was another example of why. I think it's time to open things up and start really trying to move the ball. This offense in desperate need of a conversion as they come up on third down. Black 30. Black, from midfield now, here's Roethlisberger. He gets it to Brown, good play. And he's got this down to the 35. Roethlisberger hooking up with Brown to get the Steelers at first. Nice catch right there, brings to mind the sentence. When in doubt, find your veterans. We used to laugh back in the day when they would call guys like him crafty veterans. You, know, you get up in your 30s, you're still playing receiver, but you're around that long at that position, you're doing something right. Just remember this, when he was young, he thought the crafty veteran was simply a guy who couldn't run anymore. Now he understands a little bit better. And that one blown up quickly, as he's going to be stopped before he could even get started. Call it a loss of two on the play. And it'll be second and 12. They go play action with Roethlisberger. He's going to let this one go deep. And oh, it'll be intercepted. Picked off by the safety, Eric Reed. 
Oh, timing is everything on a route like this. He tried to drive that football into a tight spot. And if you're a little early or a little late, chances are there's going to be someone there. And sure enough, this one's going the other way. They'll try to get the running game going with McCaffrey. Fights forward for only about a yard up to the 21. Well, Brandon Pace comes into play now because they've got the advantage. They've got the football. But they've got to be very careful about what speed they're going to play. You know, my, my music teacher back in New Paltz, Mrs. Bythema Bagley, used to say, don't go prestissimo when you really want to go largo. And what she meant by that is don't go too fast when you really want to go at a nice, slow, deliberate pace. I am speechless. I am without speech. And he'll get about three as he's taken down at the 23. Bottom line, they want to keep this clock rolling, so they'll take that one right there. They just want to keep falling forward, and they want to put the onus on the big fellas up front in order to bring this one home. And on third down, a nickel formation here defensively. Operating from the gun, Newton and Olsen over the middle. And he takes this up to the 40-yard line before being corralled. They call his number again. It's his sixth catch and a first down. He's been the go-to guy. They needed a big play there on third down. Went his way. It worked out. Doesn't matter whether they've scouted it or that they think he's going to get the ball. He has a knack for finding his way open and completing the connection. On first and ten, Newton. And he'll dump this off to his running back, McCaffrey. And he'll be brought down, losing yardage back at the 40. It's a loss of a yard there, and now second down. Really good defensive effort. They were all over that little swing pass out to the right side before lost yardage. Terrific read, better execution, and done with a lot of enthusiasm, wasn't it? Absolutely. They saw it all the way, ran to the football, and caused a nice play for lost yardage. Here's McCaffrey. And he takes this up right near the 45-yard line. And he gets them a little over half of what they needed. Now they're looking at a third and five. That's it. That's what you want. Straight ahead, positive gain. Just keep that clock ticking. Here you go, fellas. From the gun on third down, Newton. And that is incomplete. I'm not sure we could spot any tendency here on this third down. They could have run it or passed it. Either one was available. They chose to try and get it through the air, but they run successful. Here's Michael Pilardi now. He's been terrific so far. The Steelers offense now, they head back onto the field. And there are parts of their last drive they'd like to emulate. And of course, they'd like to forget the inning, the interception. But they did put together, Charles, a nice sustained drive to get him down the field. Yeah, and unfortunately for them, the only thing that matters is part two, right? Because once they threw the interception and finished off the drive, that does them no good to go back and say, well, you know, we had a good one going. Finish things off. That's the only way you can get it done. They go back to the air here after the INT on the last drive. He's going deep for Brown. So they took a shot on first down, but couldn't connect. I want to go back to something you said in the first quarter about is it, winning. Is, is it a positive? It is a positive. Okay. About winning the turnover battle as a visiting <laughs> team, as an underdog. You were right. They've done just that, and look where it's gotten them. It's part of the formula. When you go on the road, as you mentioned, being an underdog, winning the turnover battle is a big key, and this one's playing out in this one. Second and ten. It's Roethlisberger once more. He's going to flip one out here to his running back. And he'll get it up to the 12-yard line here. It'll be a three-yard gain. And just like that, it's third down. One thing I think that's safe to say defensively, the tackling's been really good. And because of that, it's been very, very hard for them to move the ball because you're not getting the benefits of run after catch. They're tackling them almost on the spot. That means you have to run extra plays harder to move it. On third down, Roethlisberger. And incomplete. The contact made the ball roam free and brings up fourth down. Didn't have a receiver open downfield, and as it turned out, couldn't even find his outlet man because of the coverage. It's way too tight. Unable to find anyone open. Here's Jordan Berry now. 
Standing about a yard deep in his own end zone. So possession goes over here on the punt. And the offense will take over with a new set of downs. Carolina getting set to take the field. They're out in front. Last time they had to punt it away. We'll see if they can add to their lead now. They don't want to go out and, and punt it away again. This team now wants to get a cushion, put people away. They want to run their offense and have it end up in the end zone. Newton on first down. Throwing over the middle, and it's incomplete. He was trying to hit Thomas that time, and now it's second down. All right, that one fell incomplete there, but the best quarterbacks, they'll miss on 40% of their throws somewhere in that neighborhood, similar to a great hitter in baseball who's going to fail seven out of ten times and still have a great year. In this case, you want perfection, but way better that it hits the ground instead of going to an opposite color jersey. Second and ten, Newton again. Oh, it's a screen pass. That's good play. And he slips up past the 45 before being tackled. A nice pickup there of 11 yards, and it'll move the sticks. Another nice pickup through the air, and I think a lot of people might expect them to run the ball in this situation, Brandon, but with this lead, they're electing to throw the football. Swings, slants, quick outs, things that they consider safe. Now a run with McCaffrey. And a minimal gain here as he's up to about the 47-yard line. Two yards on the pickup there. It'll be second and eight. Offensively with the lead, you want to run the ball, keep the clock going, but you also want to still kind of be in attack mode too, right? So how do you do that and not come back on your heels? Yeah, think about all the practices we've watched where they have that tempo period to go over things just like this, where they describe the scenario, tell you what they're looking for, and make sure that they're still attacking, yet at the same time not going so fast as to leave too much time on the clock. He'll get three up to midfield. The recipe's pretty simple, I think, right? Just <laughs> give your superstar the ball, continue to feed him. Yeah, don't overthink this one, right? Make sure he's touching the football, but you're also counting on his intelligence in playing the game as well. If it's not there, don't force the run. Just make sure you hang on to the football and keep the clock ticking. From the midfield stripe, they'll look to throw. They'll try and set up the screen. It's complete. And they go backwards here, losing yardage back at the 48-yard line. It'll wind up being a loss of two. And that's going to bring up a fourth down. Here's Michael Pilardi now, as he'll come on to kick for a sixth time tonight. And now out come the Steelers. And on the last go around, they really couldn't get anything going. They had to punt from deep inside their own territory, which means you're going to lose the field position battle as a general rule. What they're looking for now is a little more consistency, move the ball at least a few times on offense, get a couple of first downs, and hopefully flip the field. Yeah, just something to build off of. That's what they're looking for here. Now Roethlisberger on first down. Throw that side, complete to Smith-Schuster. That's a good way to start the drive. 17 yards and a first down. This possession means so much for them. They've got to focus on this drive and find a way to make this a one-possession game. Yes. Got to get a score. Yeah, so good with a field goal. Don't necessarily need a touchdown. Hey, hey, on first down, it's Roethlisberger. Man open left side is Brown. The passing game in rhythm right now for Pittsburgh. There's another first down. You cannot write these guys off just yet, not with a quarterback like that under center. You mean it actually crossed your mind with him running the team that you could actually maybe write this game off? Not yet. Not a chance. Not with him. We've seen it too many times. Back-to-back -back good plays have him on the move on first down. Throwing now, Roethlisberger on first down. Throwing the out route incomplete. That's McDonald. And he'll go down, but not before getting this inside the 30. Give him 30 yards there. Now that play will end up on the highlights, and you'll see it all over the place. But what you won't see 
the offensive line that bought the extra time that allowed for the big completion downfield. Those guys made that play possible. So now then, the big play has him all the way inside the 30 now, first and 10. They'll throw on first down with Roethlisberger. And his throw is incomplete. The all-pro linebacker Luke Keekley right there on the coverage, stride for stride. I'm not even sure I know who this guy is out there playing right now. This is very unlike him, one of the most accurate guys in the league, totally off his game right now. I don't know. I was going to ask you what you pin it on, but defensively, they've been pretty solid. Well, sometimes, you know, those defenders, they get into the receivers pretty well, and if they chip away at their timing, it's going to affect what you're doing throwing the ball as well. Again on second and ten, it's Roethlisberger. And he comes back with one complete. And he'll be brought down inside the 20 at the 19. They'll wind up getting 10 back as that sets him up for third down. Well, clearly one of his advantages as a passer is his height. Sit back in the pocket, fired over the middle. That makes things tougher defensively, doesn't it? It really does because your goal is to move the quarterback off his initial spot when he gets his drop back completed. But when you have that type of height, he can stay in there. If he's willing to take the hits and just fire over the top, which saves him time and actually completes a play a little bit quicker than it normally does for a quarterback who has to slide and find open space to throw. Now they've got to be a little frustrated here to not complete that on third down after having such a long drive going. Now you're talking about going over 70 yards on the drive. Yeah, did you say a little frustrated? <laughs> very frustrated. Yeah, I'm with you on that. I'm very frustrated. There's no doubt about it. They thought they were going to have a chance to cash in in the end zone. Now it looks like it's likely a field goal attempt. And Boswell's kick is good. And they will cut the lead back down to a touchdown now at 13-6. to six. All right, so they needed two scores to get back in the game. The field goal there, maybe not exactly what they wanted, but the necessary first step. There's still time remaining, and there's enough time to get it done. They've got to get at the least a three and out here to get the ball back, preferably a takeaway. After the successful field goal try, here's Boswell to send it away. This one fielded at the five. Solid return, pretty good field position. They'll start at the 32-yard line. Carolina getting set to take the field. And a tight game after punting last time. See if they can get something going on this drive. As they head to the field now, with the game this close, you've got to feel there's a sense of urgency for them going on offense right now. But they have to do it without letting panic creep in and affect their play. Set. 180. The drive begins with a run by McCaffrey, and he is met in his tracks behind the line of scrimmage. That's going to go as a loss of two, and it'll be second down. Run blitz there defensively, something we might see more of here in the fourth quarter. I think we'll see a lot of it, and, and the difference between that and a pass blitz, pass blitz, you're just trying to get to the quarterback. You're trying to scheme someone open who will get to the QB and make sure he gets on the ground. In a run blitz, you're actually trying to cover up gaps, trying to cover up holes so they can't run the football. And that play going absolutely nowhere as he's belted before he could get out of the backfield. They'll lose a yard, and it brings up third. And this is why the head coach gets paid the big bucks. Look at where they are in this situation, partner. Do you throw the ball here in a long-distance situation? Do you run it again and trust your defense and make sure you take care of the ball and punt it away? What kind of options do you have here, and what do you trust more on your team? Now, they may have just pushed him back into that throwing situation. We'll see. And some space here. It's an eight-yard pickup, and it'll be fourth down. Here's Michael Pilardi now as he's on to punt for Carolina. And not what he was hoping for there as this will hit in the end zone for a touchback. And Pittsburgh getting set to take the field. And last time able to get three. It's not what they wanted. They wanted six, but they got at least something. They mustered something out of the drive. They'll take it. 
just I, I like the way you've described it. Not ideal, but they'll take it. Anything to put some points on the board. But this time on offense, they don't even want to see the field goal kicker trot on the field. <laughs> they want that ball in the end zone. Yeah, they'll be going for six. Over the middle here to Brown. And he gets this one just shy of the 40, down at the 39. First play of the drive, a success, 19 yards. Tell you what, he's been able to put the ball in some tight spots all game long. That throw, no different. Yeah, a lot of people would call it a gutsy type of a throw. I think he looks at it as, I can do it, so it's not that big of a deal to me, and I'm going to keep firing. From up near the 40 now after the big play to start, here's another first and 10. On first and 10, it's Roethlisberger. Open man completes it to Smith-Schuster. And getting this just shy of midfield, they'll spot it at the 49. The passing game in rhythm right now for Pittsburgh. There's another first down. They like going to him in the slot. He catches another one. I think this comes under the heading of until they stop him, why not go back to it? He has something going really well. Great working relationship with the guy throwing the ball, and they keep making the connection. Back-to-back -back good plays have them on the move on first down. Now it's Roethlisberger. Now they set up the screen. That's complete. And this one goes nowhere. Losing yardage on the play back at the 46. Back to throw. And incomplete. James Conner, the running back, his intended receiver. And it'll bring up third down. So he's unable to complete it there, and just not the game that you would expect from him. He's been off the mark, really start to finish. Yeah, it makes you wonder what exactly is going on. Is he a little bit dinged up here, or is he just off just by a bit? Maybe he can get it back in this situation. He'll need to. Back to throw. They'll fight a man over the middle. It's Washington. Now on fourth down, we've got a whistle here and a timeout as they stop it prior to what will be an important fourth down. Down seven, and they've got to go for it here on fourth down. Set. Right, 80. Black, one set. One set. Got to try it here. He's back to throw. And no, it's incomplete. They had to go for it with such little time remaining, and the Panthers will get the football back. So now let's reset here, Charles. They do have two timeouts left, so they can stop the clock twice. This one's not quite over yet. No, and what you're doing on defense, you're going to use both timeouts, obviously. But you've got to call defenses are going to force the issue early, meaning you want that play over fast. You don't want to give them time to dance around in the backfield or run a wide sweep that'll take off time. Blitz them, put pressure on them, make sure that play ends quickly so that you can go ahead and keep moving. And the Steelers signal for another timeout as they'll get it with just over 90 seconds to go in the ball game. The Panthers offense here, they get ready to head back on the field. They have the lead, obviously, late in the game. I guess the good news for them is if for some reason they would make a mistake, a field goal does the opposition no good. Everyone loves to have a little bit of a cushion, and that helps you immeasurably. But the bottom line is, do all the things that you're taught in order to close out the game. Don't even let that become an issue. Yeah, but it's still a one-possession game. This one not fully over yet. Again, they run. Again, it's McCaffrey. And he'll get this one across midfield and down into Steeler territory. And play is stopped here. Timeout. It's the defense calling the timeout here. As he'll talk it over here before what will be an important third down.
They'll try and pick it up in McCaffrey. And that play goes nowhere. Taken down, losing yardage at the 50, right at midfield. That'll be a loss of four yards on the play. And that's going to make it fourth down. Here's Michael Pilardi now. He'll boot it away from about his 35. The Steelers' offense now, they get ready to head back on the field. They're down here in a one-score game. At the time, it's a factor, but it's not a huge factor right now, is it? It's really not because this amount of time gives them a chance to run their offense, to go through play sequences. And this is what they work on every week in practice, usually on a Friday. They go over this type of a situation, late game situation. What are we going to do when we have the opportunity? They've called these plays a bunch of times. Now's their chance to execute them. Well, they have the opportunity now. Here's the execution. They're throwing to start the drive, but that one incomplete. Work with me, partner. Take a deep breath, because that's what they're doing down the field now. That incompletion allowed them to exhale a little bit. Get in the huddle kind of scan the crowd, see if any celebrities are here. Relax a little bit as they start this big drive. They'll look to throw. He's going to let it fly. And that is going to be pulled in one-handed. Wow. It's a big play. Roethlisberger to Brown, 47 yards. Well, it's one thing to grab it with one hand, but when you make a catch of that distance, quite another. Yes, sir. I mean, that one right there. We keep talking about the high-flying antics that we're seeing from receivers nowadays. Doesn't matter what spot they start in, but when it actually does happen in the heat of battle, it brings me right out of my seat. Throwing for his running back, and he's got him complete. So a loss of five, and it'll be second down. Well, where do you find that one in the playbook, Charles? You don't. You absolutely don't. And sometimes what happens is guys want to make a big play, and they turn it into a really bad one. Sometimes you're best just to cut your losses and go down. I hope we don't see another play like that. I'll guarantee you the offensive coordinator, he's going to get his play sheet. He can't find it either. Yeah, big loss there on the pass completion. He's back to throw. On the left side, it's McDonald. And he gets it down to the 32. Six yards is the pickup, and that'll lead to a third down. They'll get to the line here, but remember, it's also third down. He'll look to throw. And he finds McDonald. And he's got this down almost to the 20 before he's dropped. The passing game in rhythm right now for Pittsburgh. There's another first down. Well, Charles, they were close in the end, but they couldn't get that last play, that last little miracle play done. They were within striking distance, but couldn't find a way to score. They definitely had hope. They definitely had opportunity. Just unable to cash in at the end. Not an easy play by any stretch, but they definitely had a chance. So that'll do it for my partner, Charles Davis, and the best darn crew in the industry. I'm Brandon Gauden. This has been a presentation of the NFL on EA Sports. With that, we say good night from Pittsburgh.